You're listening to Trek FM. Want to join in the conversation and share your thoughts on this episode? Join the Babel Conference, our listeners discussion group on Facebook. Just type B-A-B-E-L into the Facebook search field and we look forward to seeing you there. The 602 Club proudly presents Snyder Cuts, a Zack Snyder directorial podcast, and I am just one of your hosts here, Matthew Rushing, and as he is with me every single week through this journey through Zack Snyder's films, the one, the only, the sometimes wrong, John Mills. Whoa, 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 whoa. You had me up till that last part. I'm a little confused about that last statement you put out there because that's never happened in my life. But I'm I'm curious what would make such insane words escape from your mouth. Oh, oh, well, you know, if anybody knows our relationship on Twitter and or uh, has heard our conversations on the 602 Club, you know, you know. Yes. Uh, but we're really excited to be here tonight because we're finally going to be diving into Zack Snyder's first feature leg film, Dawn of the Dead, the remake uh, of the uh, classic zombie horror film. And so really excited to do that with you, John. But um, before we do, of course, everybody, you can find us wherever you get your podcast. Just make sure you're subscribed uh, to the 602 Club because it's in the same feed. You're getting the episodes uh, here is a little bonus for you. And, um, of course, you know, you can find us on Twitter at the 602 Club. You can find us on uh, Instagram at the 602 Club TFM. Find us online at Trek FM or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Trek FM. And, of course, there's the listeners only discussion group, the Babel Conference, so you can talk to listeners from all over the country and world as it had be. I mean, you know, why, 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 why limit it? We're, we're universal when it comes to that. <laughs> um, man, you could be on another planet. As long as you can get on Facebook, you can talk on there. Uh, and then, of course, um, we would love to hear your thoughts. And so you can send us a uh, email if you'd like over at trek.fm slash contact. So, um, I wanted to start this one, John, one, because um, if I remember correctly, you were a big fan of the original version of this film. So I kind of wanted to hear a little bit from you on that because I've never seen the original and straight up front, I'd never seen this film of Zack Snyder's. It's the only one I've never seen, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. mainly because I'm not a huge zombie person uh, unless it has to do with like, you know, like goofiness of zombie land kind of thing and so sure. but i know you like horror movies and everything so um tell me about your experience then with the original film and then maybe your first experience here uh with dawn of the dead okay uh, if i'm gonna try it's a really weird and complicated relationship with the original and i'm gonna try to keep it as brief as i can but anybody who has uh heard me on shows from time to time you know, through the years, uh, I have a very dear old friend, Joey, and we go to, we, we used to be each other's movie date all the time. We just like, <laughs> it was, what do you want to like other, our, our friends would go to bars. We would go to movies, that sort of thing. Movies were cheaper and we didn't like to drink at the time. So anyway, he was originally the huge fan of Romero's zombie movies. And Dawn of the Dead has always been a favorite of his. And he was like, I remember there was a, I think a, a restored or a director's cut that came out on VHS, ugh, aging myself there. And he said, uh, you know, let's watch it. And I'd never seen the original before. And I watched the original and it was interesting and it was compelling and it was of its time. It's very much of its time. It's very much a 70s movie and reflects those sensibilities but it's very obviously also when you look at it as a sequel to night of the living dead it is obviously a director who get, ha, now has more money and more opportunity available to him and so he takes the the initiative and makes a a grander vision of things i didn't love it the first time i saw it because there are some cheesy things. Romero made some odd music choices. There were some really silly things. But it's a movie that sticks with you. And that's the thing about Romero's zombie movies. Is they were all commentaries. They were all cultural commentaries. First one had a whole bunch about race and sexism. 
and all of those things wrapped up in it. And with the time period that it came out, it was looking at those issues, just like Star Trek. When you put it in a sci-fi environment, you can talk about those issues much more easily. You're not obligated to have a one-to-one with the real world. You can put it in a context where somebody who might recoil at the idea of having such a heavy conversation can instead intellectually process what's going on and start to think about things. Well, you get to Dawn of the Dead, that becomes a statement on consumerism because they wind up at a mall. There's a whole thing about you know, why are they coming back? Well, you know, this is what they did in life. And so we, we have this uh, examination of American consumerism. So it's a movie that over time sticks with you and you start to see and appreciate the true, really greatness of it. And for its time, the effects were uh, really gross and really, you know, like really realistic type of stuff. This was the rise of the horror movie using more realistic, shocking imagery uh, that wasn't available to them before. And so that's my relationship with the original. So, of course, when the remake comes out, Joey says, you want to go see it? I still remember the movie theater. I saw it with him sitting there. Um, it was in Frederick, Maryland, if anybody's wondering. Uh, I believe it was a Regal, uh, but Regal doesn't exist anymore now, I don't think. So it was, it isn't anymore. Well, at least there. It does, yeah. it, it does here. Yeah, well, I, live, so. I think that theater is still around, but I think that Regal as a chain is going under. But anyway, um, so we went we went to go see it, and I don't want to get into my reaction to it because that becomes this discussion here. Now, you've shared that you, you know, zombie movies, horror movies aren't really your thing. I'm chomping at the bit here internally. I'm dying to know, no pun intended, what your reaction is to a Zack Snyder branded horror movie. I mean, this is a straight up gory zombified uh, horror movie. And uh, just a little tip of my, my reaction here. I'm pretty sure this is the birth of the fat, fast moving zombie Uh, zombies up to this point had all been sort of slow herd animals that you, they just won by attrition sort of thing. And this Mm -hmm. turned everybody into an Olympic sprinter, which was a choice. But yeah, I uh, mean, and honestly, something that they, you know, you see later in like uh, World War Z, Mm -hmm. you know, um, which it it was uh, a a choice that they continued. And and I, you know, um, I think it's, you know, something that kind of gets played with. And and so uh, not being a zombie aficionado, none of those things ever bothered me in a film. It's like, you know, if you're making a made up thing you know, you can kind of tweak it however you'd like, as long as it works for the internal logic of your movie, you know? Mm -hmm, And mm so um, there's nothing about it in here that seems strange to me. But, you know, coming into this, I I really had no idea what to expect. Um, And, you know, you know my relationship with horror movies. It's not great in the sense that um, I don't love them. Uh, It's not my favorite thing. I don't really enjoy being scared. Uh, And... You know what we we watched Halloween together for the six hundred two club. It's in in the feed here if you want to check that out. Um, I've seen The Shining, which I think is great. You know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, surprised by that. Um, even more so, I love Doctor Sleep. I think Doctor Sleep's even better personally than The Shining. Uh, maybe I'm in a heretic. I'm sure people will write me emails or whatever. I still uh, haven't I, seen it, but I'm dying yeah. to put that one to the test. Yeah, it, I I thought it was fantastic, and so, but I just I didn't really know what to expect, and I I mean I've seen both of the Zombie Land films, so I'm kind of you know I mean, and in those movies, you know, the zombies are faster, they're stronger, um, they're quite disgusting. I mean, they they don't hold back on the gore in those movies either, you know. So I I kind of think I was a little bit prepared of what we were going to get here, um. But, you know, this movie um, I was pleasantly surprised by because I, I, I didn't go. I mean, I have nothing. I have no idea what to expect. I don't even know if I'm really going to like it. So the movie has to win me over. Um, and I feel like it was able to do that for the most part um, in, a, in a really surprising way. And, and part of that was. And this is what people always have always told me about The Walking Dead, which is it's not about the zombies, it's about the characters. Mm-hmm. And what I thought was is that 
the casting was good. I didn't really know too many people. Most of these people weren't big stars at that point. I mean, I know like Michael Kelly, you know, obviously from House of Cards would, you know, later become more of a kind of like, I think a household name because of that type of show. Um, but none of these people, uh, and, and what Ty Burrell, you know, from, um, well, yeah, you know, but, uh, uh, Ving Rhames had been established in Pulp Fiction. But, but, you know. Yeah, and I was just about to say, Ving Rhames, you know, obviously the Mission Impossible movies, and I think he's probably the biggest star in this movie. And, um, Mackay Pfeiffer, um, you know, he had been in some television work, I believe, at this point, you know, and he's, he's more of a household name. But I mean, nobody huge, you know, like there's no, massive personality that's kind of taking over the film i mean everybody's more on an equal footing which Mm -hmm. you know in a movie where you are trying to bring a very disparate group of people together to try and figure out how to survive this thing um i think that's kind of what you need and i was just really surprised is that most of this movie doesn't have anything to do with zombies it has to do with people trying to learn to live together in a situation which is absolutely harrowing and at any moment you know you you know could be your last basically Mm -hmm. because the quote-unquote dam could break and you know the the zombies come in and you're dead and um what i really appreciated was just that you know after that first run once they all get to the mall a majority of the story isn't really about the zombies you know until i guess the last third of the movie but the like middle third of the movie Mm-hmm. Is really about these characters working together, learning to live together, you know. Um, and to me, I was really I appreciated that because then I kind of cared about what happened to them as well, you know. Um, there are some that I kind of cared more than others, obviously, because of their personalities. But to me, that's the thing that kind of stood out to this and and made it a movie where it's like, well, I might actually watch this again, uh, just because. Um, I would love to kind of go back and, and pick up more maybe nuance and performances and those kind of things. Um, but that was my first reaction was positive, which I was kind of shocked by because, you know, I'm not a huge fan of horror zombie movies. And, yeah, it's quite gory uh, and everything. Um, but it's not torture porn, you know, like it's, you know, it's not one of those type of films. Like, um, yeah, I think that's that's a whole different genre and and so i think it, it it made it easier to stomach and i will say i watched this movie close to midnight you know like it's dark in the house there's only one light on and so i um, mean there were points of it that were were scary but nothing completely like you know i i will yeah. say this I finished the movie and I did watch another hours worth of television just so i didn't have zombies on the brain <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't really want to go to sleep with that. But yeah, that was my reaction, which I, I nobody's more shocked at it than me. You know, I, I had a love-hate reaction to this movie uh, the first time I saw it. Uh, the The beginning of the movie unnerves me greatly to this day. Uh, there's, there's, Isn't it freaky? Well, like, I, I, it's very well constructed. It's very believably put together. You can believe this character, you know, and showing how you would be unaware of the world falling apart outside you sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And that sort of, um, you know, that, that thing that, that feeds the urge that we all have to addictively look at our phones and refresh our feeds and keep the TV on in the background in a, especially in a post 9-11 world of being terrified that we're going to miss the next big cataclysm. We're, we're, we're addicted to the fear sort of thing, but the setup is great and it starts wonderfully. I mean, it kicks off and Snyder has always been sort of a master of montage. And I think that this is a very, for a first time feature film, this is an incredibly confident work. This is somebody who knows what he's doing. He is aided very much by James Gunn's script, which I, I had forgotten that he wrote it. And I said, oh, OK, you know, that that's another piece of the puzzle that falls in because James Gunn's a terrific mm-hmm. screenwriter yeah, uh, really and director is. in his own right, too. But like he's a terrific screenwriter and where this movie challenges me in the beginning. And there's one shot in particular when she stops behind the bus and you see the woman getting attacked in the bus that. Oh, that unnerved me so yeah. much. It stuck with me through all of these years. I couldn't, I can't hardly stand it because it's so unnerving. 
and then to have it go into the non-zombie guy try to carjack her basically and it it reflects a very a lot of people would say cynical but i would say pragmatic view of the world that when things start falling apart at first it's not going to be everybody coming together and joining hands and working together it's going to be terror and mayhem and those that survive are going to be faced with a choice um which is constant in every zombie movie, but you know, this does a very, very good job of putting it together. I think that Snyder gets some terrific performances. Uh, God forgive me. I always forget the actor's name. He's a delightful actor. He's a terrific actor. I always know him as Max Headroom because that's the first time I saw him in the eighties. Um, but, um, the actor, uh, who turns who they find out he's bitten and he's going to turn, and they are faced with a choice. Do we kill him now? Do we wait for it to happen? And his daughter is distraught. Mm. Um, he is. That's a terrific exchange. It's an emotionally moving exchange. It moved me back then. It moved me now as a dad to think like it's an incredibly heavy scene. It's that whole question of terminal illness. What do you do? Do you fight to the end? Do you pull the trigger now? Do you, you know, how difficult is it to say goodbye where the movie loses me is that I think Snyder gets a little obsessive with the style and dwelling on certain things that slow the story down for a couple of beats and aren't necessary really um, primarily it comes to the pregnant woman, Mikai Pfeiffer and his wife. I remember the precise moment when I saw it for the first time sitting there with Joey and when the zombie baby opened its eyes, that was the moment that it stepped across the line for me because really the effect didn't work hmm. for me. Wow. And I I'm saw it. agree with you there. And you can, but it I think that part of the challenge with that moment was that I didn't like the way Mikai Pfeiffer played it. It didn't, I, he lost me in that moment and it also became something where it's hard to describe because Whenever you watch a horror movie, I would have done this. I would have done that. Of course, you know, you don't know what you're going to do in a panic situation because you have an adrenaline dump. You people freeze. People make bad choices, that sort of thing. But even the first time I saw it, I'm sitting there thinking to myself when it's, you know, when it's the, the woman who walks in on him. Obviously, the question is de-escalate and get out of the room. Don't shoot the zombie wife. Right? Just back away and get away or shoot the dad first and then take care of business sort of thing. He's, he's your danger factor, um, which I know reduces that scene to a heartless thing, but it, it's sort of moments like that where they just don't, the gears just don't mesh quite as well as they could. And then it sort of hits fast forward in the last 30 minutes where it suddenly becomes obsessed with wrapping the story up and, as a result, some of the more interesting things that I enjoyed, like Andy at the gun store across the way, that wrapped up a little too quickly, a little too neatly for me. Um, but, you know, so so those are the moments where the gears didn't quite mesh. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting to hear that. And I don't really, I, I'm trying to think of how to respond to that because I, I feel as though what you're saying seems to be just more of your personal preference than actually anything having to do with whether or not it actually works. Because I, I think that, I mean, and just having seen it for the first time, I felt like it really worked because his motivation all makes sense. And, you know, I mean, I, I think his hope is that the baby's going to be unaffected. I mean, we all know, um, you know, ways in which, you know, babies can be born. Um, and, and so those kind of things. Um, and, yeah, in that in that moment, you know, too, you know, like you're talking about where she walks in, and you know, I mean, her her response is to shoot the zombie first. I think that makes sense too, because you would shoot what 
in your brain would be the, the first thought as the most natural threat, which is the zombie, not the dad. And so I think that also makes sense as well because, again, it's like a split decision and, and it's a gut instinct and, and it's a like, you know, if we're really face to face with a zombie, our first thing I think if we had a gun would be to shoot it in the head. You know, so well, I, I I think I think you are maybe overthinking it, and you're mm, and you're putting that into the character a little bit too much. Let, 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 let me let me pivot here. Let me let me counterpoint that uh, to say that it's very obvious that the husband at that point that Mikai Pfeiffer is mentally imbalanced at that moment. He's well, of course. I'm yeah. not saying any. I'm not saying that I wouldn't be. I'm I'm just saying it's very obvious to anybody who walks in on that scene, okay, this is, this is bigger than I'm going to be able to handle. I better, you know, smile and wave, get out of the room, find out how to handle this sort of thing. In terms of the zombie baby, it's specifically because the effect just Hmm. doesn't fly. I think that there are other moments where Snyder uh, judiciously decides not to have the camera linger on that moment. Uh, When, when certain people are executed, for instance, it cuts away and you hear the gunshot Mm -hmm. with the baby. I would have, I think that for the technology of the time, the better choice is to hear the baby sound like a zombie to see their reaction to it. Work about it for you. Like, I don't understand. It's not great computer graphics. It's, it doesn't look Real, it's the uncanny yeah, valley really sort of care. thing. I think it. it it's like oh it's no, a no, no, baby. no! Don't, don't, no. don't turn it. In, don't turn it into that. I'm, I'm saying that. No, no. that's what I'm saying. Like I, no, I, no, no. I, I, I buy it because it, it's not a real thing anyway. I, there are. I'm saying there are ways to approach it and deal with it that respect the limits of the technology of the time that allow you to sidestep those limits. As opposed to going into them. And it's not, it is not at all because I'm against pushing the boundaries and so we, not at all. It's, it's because when you're dealing with something where you want me afraid, you want me invested, you want me in that scene, you have to respect that there are going to be things that can take me out of it. I mean, I hear what you're saying. I just think you're wrong. I mean, I, I think you're, um, I think you're putting on it something where, like, again, like you were talking about, he, it's not a big deal pushing limits. Like, obviously, George Lucas does that. And, you know, I mean, we both love the prequels, but we can also admit that not all the CGI in the prequels is great. So, I mean, there are things there. Should we not have done that just no, because it's no, pushing see, the again, boundaries too much? Again, this is exactly what I was saying. Don't turn it into that because this is a very specific instance having to do with a specific horror movie you can't you have to keep everybody in it and you have to understand about the build of tension and all of those sorts of things and then respecting if the effect doesn't work exactly well and you're dealing with this specific type of circumstance right it's like when there's a a a bad cut in another horror movie and you can tell that the the hand cut off is fake or that the, you know, the, you, they leave in an extra frame and you see that the effect doesn't quite work. It doesn't mean that it's a bad story point. It means, ah, you could have, you could have cut around that a little bit differently and it would have worked better. Yeah. I not, I mean, I think the interesting, I, I, so it doesn't work for you and it works for me. And like, I, I think that's the thing. It's like, then it's a, your personal problem. It's not necessarily the film's personal problem. I know I'm not alone in the reaction, though. Okay. I know, I know, I, mean, it, I know at I, least again, one I other person who had a similar. And like, I have no reason to like like it. I mean, I like Zack Snyder, but this has nothing to do with him. I just it that part didn't bother me at all. Like, it I, freaked me out. I was like, oh, that is creepy as sin. I can I can tell you that uh, in the first viewing, when that zombie baby was projected on a giant theater screen, the effect does not look as good as it does on a smaller scale television. <laughs> But well, I mean, I'm watching it 4K, so I'm probably watching it in better resolution than you were watching it on a com- big screen. I, I the zombie baby was much larger than the screen you were looking at it on. 
I and I, I mean I understand. All that, I'm just saying. All that yeah. aside, the effect is is limited for you know for what the technology can do, and it's there are just certain moments where you have to in a horror movie. You know, understand that 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 you're going to lose at least some of the audience if the if that moment doesn't play quite right. Now, I mean, the thing is, again, I go back to the way other moments were handled when the camera cuts away and there's a beat and you hear the gunshot and you're left to think and fill it in that way. I just think that would have worked better here. I, I mean, you know, yeah. I, I mean, the thing is, I. I it wasn't my intention to spend this much time hung up on Zombie Baby, but it's, you know, it is what it is. I mean, the well, the, yeah. lar- the larger issue is that I really think that Mikai Pfeiffer doesn't play the scene well. Um, he loses and I, me. Yeah, and I, I can, I can respect that. You know, if, a, if an actor's choices don't work for you, it, it can definitely hurt a scene. Um it wasn't enough to to bother me at all and you know it was it was interesting because you talked about the film you know speeding up uh at the end um and and for for myself i was actually impressed with the way they kind of do that where they you know you have the whole moment where they lose power and then they have to go down and turn the generators on obviously mm-hmm. generators they're not going to run forever you know, so you're getting to the point where you're running, you're going to run out of food in the mall. You're mm-hmm. going to run out of power in the mall and you're stuck here, you know. Uh, and so there has to be some plan of action. So I, I thought that they had built towards that pretty well. Um, and the only thing that I and so you had that moment. But the, the thing that kind of borrowed me, bothered me was the girl running after the dog. Same. Yep. Um, that w- that, w- you know, that, that didn't help. Now, look, you know, I know that there are so many people out there who are so attached to their pets, they probably would do the same thing, you know, so I'm not putting against it, but it just felt a little bit like, like a silly choice for this movie, what? but it was also the way that in which it's like in the screenplay that also gets you to the place where you're going to be able to get enough guns to do what you're going to do. You know, so I I get what they're doing, but it's like it it wasn't the best reason for them for me to like make it over to Andy's shop. They had they even say they had to make it to Andy's shop to begin with, that it was a necessity, and right. yeah, as a result, it whether we realize it in the moment or not, as you think about it, you realize oh well, the script itself basically just said well we put her in danger for no real reason. And that is right. one of those things where they could still go over and they say, okay, we'll go over his plan. And then the dog's still alive. And you're like, oh, good. Uh, you know, the dog is still alive. Yay. Instead of having this big forced moment, uh, basically. Right, right. And so, you, yeah, I mean, I think that probably hurt a bit of my enjoyment as well. Uh, I really thought that the element that was added about Andy's gun works which i think is the funniest name of a uh, of, of a store i've seen in a movie uh you know for for a long time andy's gun works uh, it's mm-hmm. such a childish joke but it's but it's funny, funny. you know <laughs> but that's an element added in there were there were changes made between the original and this that really justified the remake if you're going to do a remake make it worthwhile update it in a meaningful yeah. way yeah and yeah, don't just do the same thing that you've already done before exactly like, shot by shot remake don't redo psycho like that you know yeah there's no point it's already been done why would you do it exactly the same so because you're unoriginal <laughs> well uh you know well i mean you know I, whatever whole other discussion but I, I you know I would say that um there's definitely more good than bad here. I think that mm-hmm. what's really interesting is you can definitely see Snyder's use of of color saturations already there. I know James Gunn is also a Superman fan, so the the Metropolis mentions got to be a little much. It would have been I personally I'm one where it's like a, a f- that first fleeting reference to Metropolis 
so that if you catch it, you go, ha ha, cute. But then they mentioned Metropolis one or two more times later. And it was like, okay, yeah, no, I heard it. I heard it. You don't need to say it again. But you see right there already the seeds of Superman in Zack Snyder. Mm -hmm. You know, we we talked about with Michael Jordan, the Superman angle to that. And then we, right. so Snyder is obviously, you can see through all of his works that Superman is is very much baked into it. Um, I think that uh, in terms of watching this unrated cut, it's a little gorier. I didn't notice anything substantially different from the theatrical. There's probably yeah, a couple. I mean, of... I've never seen the other, so I mean, it did seem to be like they were able to focus on some more gore, most yeah. likely, and and it's like you would have had to cut some certain scenes a little bit differently or cut them sooner than you would have. Yeah. Um. You know, something you mentioned earlier that I thought was a key, and and honestly, a place where I can kind of see the future for Snyder as a director, but you know, Snyder has a especially with films like this, but he has a, uh, a real sense of the realism. And I think you mentioned like this cynicism, you know, about mm. the real world. Like he doesn't treat the real world with kid gloves. He just straight up, it's the real world. Right. And mm -hmm. this is how people would act. This is how people would respond. Um, you know, this is what would really happen or you, and, Unless you're putting, uh, you know, another layer on it, if you tear that layer off of what we hope would happen and you think about, OK, how would people really respond to this? That's what you get. And, and I think obviously that's going to play huge into his films, you know, when he gets into the superhero genre. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting here. And I think that it makes the movie more successful to deal with people as they are, not as how you would want them to be. And he allows people to be their ugly selves in this film um, and yep. be unapologetic about that. And in some ways I think that's really brilliant because um, it is much more realistic. And like you said, if you're going to do this remake, um, this is why you would want to do that. You, you, you would want to do it in a way that kind of looks at things a little bit differently. And I, I think, you know, this was a movie that, that did allow us to kind of look at maybe some of our worst tendencies um, and, and see, wow, would we, would we be able to come together at all? Would we be able to, if, if, a, a something as astronomical as this happened, you know? Um, and that was great. But again, this is going to be something that Zach's going to use later on, especially once he gets to Man of Steel. Uh, and he asked the question, how would the world respond if Superman literally came down to our planet today? You know, mm -hmm. this is the question. How would people respond if zombies literally happen today? And it's it's the same kind of question. It, and then you make the movie off of that. And so I think him with gun sensibilities and what's great here, gun, you know, there's none of the like super quippy, jokey things that you obviously get in like Guardians of the Galaxy. So you can kind of see just how, uh, you know, impressive he is as a, as a writer to be able to create something like this that ha does have some humor in it. But this is much more serious you know film so yeah i all of those things really struck me as, as being real pluses for this film and just being interesting as we look at snyder's works you know speaking of uh you know looking at snyder's works uh, first and foremost I, I agree with you i think that the one of the greatest aspects of this script is the dialogue i think that the the pacing of the dialogue is perfect so of course that also speaks to the performances that speaks to the the editing there, obviously, I don't think that that one scene with Mikai Pfeiffer works particularly well. I think that there are other things where uh, the jerk boat owner character, uh, Steve, is it's a little much. It, you know, it it goes a little far uh, sometimes, uh, leaning a little bit too much into the archetype. Um, but there is generally among the main characters, the main focus characters, a real. Uh, fluidity to their conversation that moves things along and never feels forced. So that's a really good thing. And so, of course, you know, kudos to the script, kudos to Snyder for recognizing that sensibility and keeping it going. Um, but I want to ask you, because we're, you know, we're talking about Snyder's style and everything, and the focus of this podcast is on Snyder himself. What's the first moment where you looked at this and you said, oh, yeah, this is a Zack Snyder movie? 
Uh, I think it was the lighting in the film, even from the mm-hmm. very beginning in the hospital. I was also really impressed with the way in which his shot composition, uh, especially, you know, when they're first going through the mall and you have different people alone in stores and how he takes the most innocuous shots and makes them creepy just by how he chooses to shoot them and how he uses like the, um, you know, the partitions and things like that in the mall. And, and shooting behind those and like slowly moving the camera. And it's kind of a classic thing to do, but I mean, he does it really well. Uh, and I think, uh, again, the lighting in all the scenes really helps. It never feels uh, forced, the lighting. It always feels more natural, which really helps in the movie. And, you know, he he also, he does a little bit of slow-mo, but he also has some things where, you know, he has those focus shots where he, he does have you... Um, focus specifically on something he wants you to see. Uh, and then I, you know, it, one of the things that sucks out, sticks out to me was, you know, in all the massive action sequences, you're never feeling lost. Mm. Even here, you know, um, I, I think especially when they're going to Andy's place, you know, and they get out and the zombies start trying to attack them and everything. Um, you know, them getting out of the manhole, trying to get to the truck, the geography of where you are, you never feel lost. That's something that he's very good at in his action mm-hmm. sequences, making you feel oriented. But part of that is what we talked about before, where, you know, he, he has the ability to help you focus on what you need to be focusing on, while at the same time, not, uh, not you know, keeping action from being happening all over the screen. I, I think it gets a little muddled on during the final... Um... I guess we'll call it car chase. It gets a little muddy there. Uh, I think that it's just a little too ambitious for its own good. But at the same time, I don't know how else they could have approached it. Um, so it's like it's it's a Kobayashi Maru. It, it, for what it was, it was the best way it could be handled overall. But I think that there were just some staging considerations that sort of uh, provided their own challenges, I think, visually and, and editorially. Um I think the scale of it is very, very Snyder, uh, his explosions. Like it's weird that I can look at a special effect, like a big flaming fireball. And I can say, Oh, that's a Zack Snyder movie. He definitely has a, a style for that sort of thing. Um, along with action, he shoots action extremely well. Um, but I would agree with you that it is the lighting, the, but also the color saturations are comic booky um from the very start the very the red lipstick pops a whole lot against the green background so there's very much that that same sort of comic book sensibility and i'm not saying it as a pejorative i'm saying it as the colors have to pop on those panels you have to be able to tell what's going on and it needs to draw your eye and there's this very early on shot of her when she's talking with the on-duty nurse when she's getting ready to go home where the camera is fixed on her and just her her skin tone, her lipstick, her eye color <laughs> against the green background. It looks like a comic book panel. And I mean that as a compliment. It's very obviously somebody with a very sure sense of what they're trying to communicate uh, with with everything. So, I, yeah, I would say just right out of the gate, it wouldn't have meant anything to me at the time, obviously. Zack Snyder wasn't a name that I knew. Uh, it, it's not like I said, oh, wow, it's the guy who directed the uh, the Lizzie Borden video. Yeah, I'm going to go see that. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what we all said? <laughs> yeah, right. But at the same time, especially with the montage and then with the music choices, you can tell that he comes from a music video background, that that very much influences his sensibility over the opening credits, which I think are terrific. The Johnny Cash song that he chooses. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the way that he cuts everything together, it's a brilliant, that opening credit sequence is a brilliant short film. It's absolutely he's brilliant. Do the exact same thing in Watchmen. Like that's the exact same trick. That's, yeah. that's what he's doing. Yeah. Know, so. I, well, I can't wait to revisit that either. Um, but that is, uh, I, I just, I, I think it's great. I mean, That's the thing that's sort of frustrating in conversations about Snyder is that there are so many good things about his style 
And I think that a lot of the things that I'm dinging this movie for could have been fixed in the script, could have been fixed in a couple of performance choices and a couple of editorial choices, sure. But there's this odd thing where people seem to obsess over moments here and there, and they lose the forest for the trees, as it were. And I think that's something that's going to plague him throughout his whole career, just like Zombie Baby plagued me in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it. it one of the things that I think that's a good point, and it it seems to be for, and, I, and we, I'm, I'm sure we'll get into this when we get to Man of Steel, but I, I think it does be, become that he has such a definitive point of view. Mm-hmm about things like he he makes no apologies for the films that he makes and the way he makes them and the way he shoots them the, and and the things that he does that are very much him you know and in much the same way that nolan would never apologize for anything he does you know um, yeah, and, <laughs> just look at his comments about tenet <laughs> exactly exactly um and so he's uh but what, what, which is interesting too, because Zach is much more approachable and amiable about things than I think Nolan is. Nolan, I think, is 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 sometimes he maybe it's his British sensibilities, but he comes off as quite pretentious and like he doesn't want to listen to anybody else. Whereas, you know, Zach would probably argue with you if you wanted, um, and has. I mean, you look at him on Twitter or, or other places. You know, he he's willing to share his opinion and 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 talk about why he makes a choice and. You know, those kind of things, but he's not going to apologize for it. And I think, you know, that's the sign of an artist, right? Like, Zach, we've talked about this before in in our previous episodes, but Zach is trying to make art here. And, like, he consciously made the choice to, to shoot this the way he did and light it the way he did because he felt like that was the best way to tell the story. And, I mean, it brings it to life in a way that you're not necessarily expecting. You know, what's really interesting is their very interesting double feature, quote unquote, for me would be this version of Dawn of the Dead and Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween, which, you know, full well, I adore the original Halloween. I think it's absolutely masterfully made all of those sorts of things. And I hated Rob Zombie's remake. Similarly, I view him as an artist because his first two movies, I think, are brilliant Absolutely brilliant. House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects are not for the faint hearted uh, or or people who don't want to feel a little bit uh, challenged with what he might be saying sort of thing. Um, But then he got to the remake of Halloween. And what's really interesting is a lot of people blasted him for it. And I'm one of them. Uh, Not to his face. Obviously, he doesn't know me from Adam. But a lot of people blasted him for it, and he his attitude was, look, I made the movie I wanted to make, and I did it my way, and what you got to keep in mind, because people were saying, oh, you're treading on sacred ground, he said, I, this movie was going to get remade no matter what, so I took my best shot at it. This is a similar sort of thing. This movie was going to get remade no matter what, and Zack Snyder put his imprint on it. This is now a Zack Snyder movie. Dawn of the Dead, if I say Dawn of the Dead to somebody, they think of this one first. And it's not just a function of time. If I say Halloween, people think, think of 1978 or the the direct sequel that came out in 2018. They don't think of, of Rob Zombie. And I think that's one of those things where you have to understand that Snyder here has his own style, but he treads a very fine line and he still makes a movie that was going to be made, was going to be released was going to happen no matter what and made it in such a way that regardless of whether you're a Zack Snyder fan, it's still a movie that you would want to watch. Whereas Rob Zombie makes remakes Halloween and he makes a movie that people have pretty much just tried to forget. I know there are fans of it out there and I know that if any of them are listening, they're really mad at me right now. But I mean, let's all be honest with each other. (laughs) You know, it is what it is. So I think that um, this movie, while I don't think it's a masterpiece, is something where I look at it and I say, well, okay, th- this movie was going to happen no matter what. He saw his in and he made a movie. And yeah, I, after I saw it, I learned his name and I became interested in what he was going to do next. What did you think of the choice to... Uh, to- have this have no happy ending. Like we don't leave it that they escape on the boat. 
but no, we leave it as is. And, and I would say this and I would it's a much more realistic way, you know, like the, there's no getting away from this problem no matter where you are. Uh, that's sort of a zombie movie staple, to be honest. So it wasn't unexpected. But what I would say is that I do think that it's a. I think it's a stronger ending to have it end with her looking back and then hearing the gunshot and you're left to ponder it. Is that it was because that's depressing. You don't know if the Island is there. Sure. You don't know if they're right. off on a goose chase. She's just lost the second love of her life. Um, we've seen death and destruction and sadness all the way. The, for all we know, these are the last four people on earth that aren't zombies and it's heart wrenching. And then I think that it just goes a little too far in the credits. And it just, I, I, I mean, it's a way to keep you watching the way the Marvel singers are, but it's, I think it's just a little too far. What, what did you think of it? I mean, it didn't bother me. And I felt like it, because of the movie that he'd already made, it made sense. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, like nobody is, nobody's getting away. And in some ways, like it was an interesting, kind of thematic element of like nobody's innocent. Nobody is like no matter where you go, you can't escape your problems. You can't escape the problems, right? You're just gonna mm -hmm. bring them with you in some ways, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I, to me, it was like okay, so that kind of made a, a really interesting like. Obviously, you talked about the original Dawn of the Dead having uh, some some social commentary, and you know, in in many ways. This this did too, and and that was something that I took away from it. You know, is like that's that's not a bad thing to leave you thinking. Like, man, it doesn't matter where we go, we're still gonna have the same problems. You know, um, this is just much more in your face. You know, it's zombies. Um, but I, that was interesting to me. That that was an interesting note to leave it on. But I I let me say this. I also like what you said, and I, I could see how I would also have loved it if that was the end. I think it would have been a really strong end as well. So, I, I do also want to tip the hat uh, to him for having what I thought was a fairly masterful Aliens reference, homage, if you will, uh, when they were running back to the mall through the sewers. Uh, very evocative of the Aliens chasing everybody through the base. Um the, the way that Cameron staged that when they got into the ducts and everything, the way that it was yeah, shot, the yep, way the camera yep. moved, the, very Gorman feel, but at the same time, not having um, that the, uh, the the jerk security guard who, you know, I, I mean, and that's another thing is giving the characters a chance to redeem themselves. It would be very easy with those three security guards to just say, oh, they're jerks, and then just have them get offed by zombies halfway through. But instead, he gives them the opportunity to become a part of the group, to redeem and understand themselves. And their redemption isn't through self-sacrifice. Their redemption is through, you know, if this is our new society, we all have to find a way to live with each other, regardless of what we did in the past. We can't hold a grudge. Everybody's got to come together. Oh, brother. And what a perfect message for today. Isn't it? Like, we can't live in the past. You got to deal with the present, you know? Right. Like, we got to find a way to move on together with mm -hmm. the problems that we have now. And, 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 wow, good night. That just kicked my butt. That was good, brother. Um, so, no, I, I you're absolutely right. So, one question I kind of wanted to get to before we kind of get to what we would rate this is just... Did a second watch of this, did it ameliorate anything for you? Did it make it um, a movie where you have more acceptance of or did it stay similar to where it was? It stayed fairly similar to where it was. Being prepared for the scene that I didn't like made it go down easier. Um, like a spoonful of sugar. Right. Familiarity breeds better movie experiences, I guess. But, <laughs> it, you know, it, it's, um, I just, I think the movie's got a really good flow. I think it's got a terrific sense of pacing. I think it's got a great style. There are just a couple of things where I think 
it it's a victim of being in early work. Uh, and there, are, I th- I honestly think that if you took, if Zack Snyder was given this movie today, I can almost look at this and say, I know what he would have done differently here. And he would have yeah, done differently yeah. there. Yeah. And I think that actually also makes me enjoy the movie more because I can look at this and see how he has grown as an artist that he hasn't, mm-hmm. I, I won't drop he any stagnated. I will. I won't drop any any director names, but you and I both know who's in my brain right now in terms of a director who started strong and never got, <laughs> never climbed the ladder any higher. <laughs> We're just going to leave it at that. Wink, nudge. People can reach out to me on social media if they want to know who I'm talking about. So, um, I, you know, I, you have been uh, over on our uh, the other network that we both are on, uh, the Nerd Party. You know, you guys just did Nolan on mm-hmm. House Lights, right? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it sounded like to me from listening to that conversation, you'd much rather watch this first uh, run as a director than no one's first run as a director. Than following? Yeah. Yeah. Fo- following is, yes. Um, it's not really that fair a one-to-one. I would say that this is actually an even more fair um, – uh, an even more fair one to one because Nolan with following didn't have studio backing. He was literally, you know, shooting with so borrowed maybe insomnia. Tongue. Then no, I would actually go to Fincher and say, oh, okay, I would, I would put this on sort of a level playing field with Alien Three. Oh, interesting. Yeah, where I can there's see that. yeah, there's a lot of style. There are a lot of things I like, and then there are just a couple of things that just stick in my craw, and I'm like, ah, oh, just. It, it's never going to transcend those moments, mm-hmm. but yeah, I accept them because so, they're there. It, well, what, what would you go with then as a rating for Dawn of the Dead? I would probably go with this as a pretty solid three and a half out of five. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, that's higher than I thought you were going to go. So that's really good. No, I mean that and that to, to go back to it. That's why I didn't want to get hung up on zombie baby. Like it's, right, it's, right. it's a moment. Well, no, I mean, you know? yeah, no, and I understand. I, 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 for me, it was just trying to do, drill down. You sure. Know? Sure. So sure. I, it, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it moves. It doesn't linger when you have a problem. It's past it before you, before it becomes, you know, uh, an issue that you're going to have to worry about. Right. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it's clean, it moves, it's efficient, the performances are strong overall. Yeah, three and a half. Where'd you land up with it? So, yeah, I, and then this is a total shocker to me. I, you know, I landed at a four out of five. Wow. You know, be, because, you know, where I come into this, to win me over to this movie, I think is even harder than, say, you, because mm-hmm. you're already kind of a fan of this genre. You're a fan of of horror movies and all those kind of things. So to get me on board with this in the first place is a big hurdle, right? That's terrific. Um, and um, and I just I I liked the characters. I, I like the relationship, you know, um, between them. I thought was was really strong, and and um, I was just kind of blown away that. You know, I, I didn't expect, you know, you, I, I think you don't really expect going into a horror film that you're going to care about characters, really, per se. Hmm. You know, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was really well done, and um, and I really enjoyed it. And as we've been doing this, you know, I think it was really interesting to see so many of the things uh, that Zach will become known for already be here like you said coming out of the gate as a first directorial debut as a feature filmmaker this is really it is really strong and it shows a command and it shows that this guy knows what he's doing he has something to say but he also has a style to which is going to be interesting to see grow you know i i have a question two questions for you obviously we'll do i guess sort of like a, a rolling ranking as we go through but obviously, sure. since this is the first one of his movies we've watched, it's going to sit at number one for a week here. So yeah, congratulations, yeah. Dawn of the Dead, for, <laughs> from by Zack Snyder, for being on the number one slot of the Zack Snyder movies so far. But with your rating, that four star, uh, let's give the people just a tiny little taste. Where does that put it in the overall pantheon of Snyderness? Is this 
is this top of the pack, middle of the pack, bottom of the pack in terms of how you tend to enjoy his works? You know, this is probably going to end up middle. Okay. You know, uh, as as of right now, something like, uh, and again, I haven't seen it in years, but like Sucker Punch would probably be at the bottom. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, this is going to probably find its way somewhere around the middle. Um, okay. And so, you know, I, I think that's 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 uh that's good especially again and this is where it, it you know it has a lot of work to do for me it's it's just a film to which i wouldn't have really watched even even though i am a snyder fan the subject matter doesn't didn't necessarily you know make it something that i really would have been interested to see but you know it it's been fun in the last few years for me to kind of challenge my own preconceptions about certain things when it comes to film and I found that there are some things that I like, you know, and or enjoyed. That doesn't mean I love the entire genre, you know, but there are certain parts of it that I, I think are great or, or have, have, have been able to like say, oh, man, I like, you know, just recently um, one of my good friends came over. He's a big film guy. Uh, and we rewatched the 4K edition of the uncut version of Psycho together, you know, so, um, you know watching some types of films that I wouldn't necessarily have watched, you know, maybe even 10 years ago, that's been fun. And so to have this surprise me was great. <laughs> that's terrific. I, do you think that this could be with this surprise? Do, so if somebody were to recommend, say, hey, you know, hey, here's a horror movie that I think you would like, given that you like Dawn of the Dead, would you be like, could this be a gateway drug for you toward more of the stylized horror genre possibly um and you know again it's really specific for me because um just personally i tend to be a person who is has a really active imagination um Mm -hmm. and i don't want to close my eyes going to sleep and see something you know, and, and that's what happens to me just personally. And it it's just not something I enjoy. I know certain people love being scared like that and they love all that stuff. It's not me personally. This film didn't, didn't quite have that, you know, like I was able to, after an hour of watching something else, be able to let it go. But I think part of that is because I've already seen zombies before and like zombie land and, and the gore level is not terribly more than what i'd seen in zombie land you know it's it's pretty gory yeah. but i mean and again in zombie land uh part one and two they they don't shy away from making things really disgusting uh, true you know so um you know i'd already been prepared for that you know uh so but yeah i mean you know i might be more open um and i i think that's what's you know it it's fun it's just fun um and i you know coming into this I thought this might be one that I wouldn't like at all, and it, you know, so yeah, the the surprise is is cool. really the the coolest part. I you know I'm I'm thrilled to hear it. I mean, the thing is, if anything, it, it's really uh, it, you know, it really recommends a movie when it opens somebody up to a genre they wouldn't normally consider. So that that's high right. praise. That's that's ter- I'm I'm thrilled to hear it. I really am. I th- I think that's yeah. terrific. Well, and I think you know. I, just as we had the conversation, you know, and, and I know, and anybody who's listened to you long enough knows a three and a half is a good rating, you know, um, <laughs> for John, you know, like a three what? and a half, like you, you, but, I, and this is not a bad thing, but you are a stingy raider. You, you, you're not somebody who, <laughs> who, who airs on the side of, of extra stars or half stars, but I appreciate that bit about you. You're very consistent. And so for you to have reached, a three and a half means that you think that this is a film not only worth watching, but you would probably rewatch it, which is impressive, oh, yeah. you know? So I just, I, I think, you know, coming to this, I thought you might be more like a three or a two and a half. And so to hear you go three and a half, I'm like, Oh yeah, man, that's, that's a good rating for, for John. Well, I, I guess that's a compliment. So thanks. No, it is because I, I, I mean, like, for, I know that if John gives a movie a three and a half, and if you go above that, like, that's where it's really like your rating system and your personality. It's like if you're giving him something a four, four and a half, or five, like, you really love the movie. You know, that's true. Um, that is so, true. 
when you get close to that, I know that it's a movie that you really appreciate. So, yeah, this has been so much fun. And, I mean, I gosh, I can't wait the fact that, you know, we're going to uh, get into 300 next week. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think that'll be a lot of fun to revisit. Um, and that may be uh, the movie that where all the Zack Snyder finally comes out. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> he releases the Zack Snyder hounds. But, John, yeah. if uh, people want to kind of catch up with you and see what else you've got going on, um, cause you've got a lot of irons in the fire. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me online as Kessel Junkie, K-E-S-S-E-L-J-U-N-K-I-E. Uh, occasionally, apparently annoying people on different social media networks. Hey, that's what I do. Uh, but you know, if you want to have a little bit of fun, uh, find me on Letterboxd or Goodreads where, you know, I offer my, my pithy thoughts about movies and books, uh, and stuff like that. Very focused sort of thing. I try to spend majority of my time there nowadays anyway. Uh, but you can also find me over on the nerd party network as a part of house lights, uh, which you graciously mentioned before where, you know, we look at the, the works of directors and we, we go through those, those catalogs and also on the nerd party. I'm very proud to be a part of a, what I think is a terrific, uh, star Wars podcast called aggressive negotiations, um, where I'm aided and abetted by, uh, a lovable co-host by the name of Matthew rushing. Would you know anything about you know, him, I've Matt? I've heard of that show. I feel yeah. like I've, I've heard of that one. Yeah. People yeah. should check that out. I think uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can find me on social media under Matt Rushing 2 Just uh, search for uh, that, and you'll find me if I'm on that platform. Uh, you can also find me here on the network doing, of course, the main 602 Club show, which you know John's on plenty of times. But we're talking about all of these fandoms we love. Um, you know, not just, you know, the nitty gritty of like one director, but we're, we're talking about it all. So, so check that out. Uh, of course you could find me over on the nerd party network doing another show called owl post with Drea Kaufman. As we talk about Harry Potter each and every week, one chapter at a time, we're almost done with that series. Uh, and it's been a blast as we've been doing it. Uh, and then here, of course, doing literary treks as well as the orb. Literary Treks is about the books and the comics of Star Trek, and the orb is about Star Trek Deep Space Nine. But, guys, you know what? Thank you so much for joining us. And this is Snyder Cuts. Snyder Cuts.